You're watching Morning at NTV. It is the 10th of December 2018. Yes, we are getting closer to Christmas. I hope that you had a peaceful weekend, you had a peaceful night, and that you're geared up for the week. My name is Malaki Vilodera. Now, today on Morning, uh, on morning at NTV Kickstarter segment, we'll be talking about business. Now, we'll be taking a focus on business trends, the winning business trends that took center stage in 2018, and also get to know what businesses are likely to take center stage come 2019, so that you, the business puzzle, are in the position to position yourself rightfully to be able to get business come 2019 and make the right investment choices. So in studios to break that down is Dr. Fred Muhumuza. He is an economist right here in the country. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Remember, okay. we are on the hashtag Morning at NTV, so keep your views coming. What <coughs> business trends do you think actually took center stage in uh, 2018 here in Uganda? So let's get right into it. 2018 has been quite vibrant as much as we've seen, you know, yes, business people complaining, saying that, you know what, it's been hard to do business in 2018. The economy is not doing well. Yes. And then we also saw the coming of, uh, you know, the mobile money taxation that really hit hard. Yes, so uh, give us your view on that. What's the number one business trend that actually won 2018? I think we're still seeing uh, quite a lot of business in the services sector mm -hmm. as usual ICT carried the day. Mm -hmm. ICT. ICT, yes, they mm -hmm. did carry the day. Co followed by financial services, it don't go banking, it don't go insurance. They had a good uh, performance. And this is also validated by the top 100 uh, that was done by a survey. Right. Ghana Investment Authority, KPMG, Monitor Publications, and I think ICE Insurance. They, they, they do a mid size company survey and they looked at quite a lot of um, about 600 companies. Mm -hmm. You have information about three to four hundred that was, and they look at a good trend. Must have audited accounts of about three years, and audited accounts that means that's a, a data set you can rely on. Those are business figures you can rely on. Right. And they are looking at companies between two hundred and fifty million all the way to twenty-five billion. So that's the real belt that runs the Ugandan economy, I would say, because it links the top with the bottom, and the really dragon. And when you look into that, you find ICT did so well. Mm. Uh, you find banking and insurance did so well, as you would expect. Agriculture also did well, but that was just more this the turn of weather. Right. So the weather was good. You don't want to say we have finally put history behind us uh -huh. because we still have those uncertainties. We are depending on parameters we cannot control. This year we're not expecting much of that performance. And real estate is still struggling on. Uh, but real estate, the bulk of it, you have them engaged with government. Mm -hmm. The, the people who are doing government uh, businesses, construction companies, real estate, the real me and you building our houses seems to have slackened a little bit. And, and those are areas you want to get concerned about because these have been some of the major drivers right. uh, of growth. Of growth. Yeah. Let's start with ICT and just delve into it much deeper. When you talk of ICT being the number one, you know, um, of course, trend that won the day when yeah. it comes to business in 2018, just break it down for us. Is it the big players, the big boys in ICT or the small ones also yeah. got something? You know, the, the beauty with ICT, it is actually integrated. They carry each other long mm -hmm. somehow if MTN is making money out of mobile money then all its agents are literally making some money so because they are carried on along that's why you see when OTT came in the cries were all the way and actually high, they were more viable kind of noisier at the bottom because the people who really felt the punch were these uh, mobile money agents mm. whose kind of transactions kind of collapsed in some areas and also it depends on their location. There are those who are located in rural areas. They really make not that much money. People are sending 1,000 or 10,000, 20,000, and then there are few. Others are just withdrawing. So it's that kind of slow business down there. But that's ICT. It pulls it, it, it itself all the way. Right. There is another group of what they call professionals. Now these are consultancies. These are all sorts of people provide you ICT services. Yes. My, my mobile phone can't work, my computer is stalled, the internet networking, and, and the business grows the more we get all on the net. Because now you have smartphones, literally quite a number of Ugandans are on the net. Mm -hmm. And so many of them keep getting different problems. And I think these are some of the things that are driving the economy. Now the main thing you want to say is what is the benefit? Why are people on the net? Are they doing business? Are they just doing Lugambo? 
because that can be dangerous to an economy that your main driving sector is actually consumptive. So I would be worried if people are on the net sports betting. And I think these are the things that are driving it. Because <laughs> a lot of Ugandans you've have actually, gone on to bet. You've actually s talked about sports betting and I think that's what has been taking, you know, the exactly. day when it comes to the yes. young people. So underneath you want to say this is driving the economy. This is the fastest growing area. But what is it doing? Is it really bringing the economy down? Because if all it is doing is to reallocate money, people has hard earned money have gone into sports betting. Mm. They move all that money into a smaller entity. Then you have your ICT promoting inequality. And inequality is very bad for an economy. Because an economy needs a mass number. When we talk about 20, 37, 40 million Ugandans. Are they able to buy a basic cup of coffee every day, each one of them? Mm. I hear people saying, we have 8 million children. If each one of them took a litre of milk a day, or half a litre of milk a day, Half a litre of milk in this town is 1,000 shillings. Right. Can anybody afford that? So your 40 million are not helping to move the economy. But if the income was well distributed and you don't have these sectors driving it into smaller boxes and corners, then that would be a positive thing. So much as the economy is growing, we need to see what does that mean for the future. You have mentioned something very important, and I think we just turn, is it a blind eye or we just never pay so much attention into it, and that's sports betting. So when yes. you say that it promotes inequalities, how best then can that you know, sector be managed, so to speak? You know, it, it, there have been some kind of limitations, limited to those who are 25 years and above. But what is happening, those who are below 25 years, they have literally no money. But also in Uganda, you can't tell who is on and who is not. It's just a legalistic thing that if we find an, a 20-year-old betting, the sports betting company will say, I declare. Right. I said, are you above 25? And this person lied. Now, who is even going to be checking those? If our national ID was well linked with the people's phone numbers and well linked with the sports betting, then you could have an audit to check and say, wait a minute, some of the people who say they are 25, who have actually found they are below 25 by their national ID registration records. Or the system would be well linked to automatically reject them. You shouldn't even be asking how old are you. Mm. The moment you put in your phone number, you should be able to check with your national ID and knock you out. Now, you don't have those, so it's possible younger people, the law is prohibiting, are actually doing sports betting. That's number one. Number two, it doesn't mean that when you're 25, you should bet. Some of these practices are very dangerous and bad. Now, in some jurisdictions, some countries actually limit some of these activities. There are even countries that put a ban. Mm. No sports betting at all. Because not adding any value. But in Uganda, a few companies participate in it. It gives us some tax revenues. Right. But all these benefits might be at the expense of the bigger haul. Because it's a huge amount of money. When you see how much people are, are putting into this industry. Every time I'm driving around, the weekend is coming, football games are coming up. And you see people lined up and now some of them are betting online, others are betting where. It's a huge industry mm. and I really have question marks on what it's doing to the economy. I don't think it's positive. Okay. It's not positive. It's definitely not positive. All right. Before we move away from ICT, do you think that it's going to be a winning trend come 2019? It certainly is going to be uh, because it, ICT is a global driven entity. So it's not even just Ugandan companies who have put in an effort. They're already being dragged by their peers globally. And I want to believe it has attracted the best brains in the world. Mm. From Silicon Valley, now you have all the way to China, you have all the way to India, you have all to Malaysia, you have India, India, and Uganda. Now, where the brains converge, they are going to play on your psychology. They are going to make it cheaper for you. Because now in Uganda, it used to be very difficult to buy a phone. Right. Now, they realize, no, we don't make money on selling phones. We make money by people being actually on. So lower the phone costs. So today at $30, 25 you can get a smartphone. Now, you realize you spend more money on the net than um, per month than actually you spend buying the phone. Right. Now, that's their trick. Even buying the talk time. Exactly. That's their trick. Yeah. So get people on board. So I keep imagining, supposing 1 million Ugandans, because we are told we have about 22 million people with phones. Let's say maybe 10 of them have smartphones. Again, let's say 10% of those, 1 million people, are going to put just data of 1,000 shillings per day. How much money is that? Mm. That is going into this sector. Mm. So those are the kinds of things you see that it is going to continue as a winning thing because it's making money. Right. The concern is, is it building the economy? 
And just for someone who is watching us today, of course, like you're saying, ICT took the day when it comes to 20 um, business trends, winning business trends 2018. So if I'm watching today and I'm interested in ICT, and of course you say that even, you know, the prospects look really, you know, yes, um, promising so. come 2019, where in the segments should I place myself? Because I know there are categories when it comes to ICT. They're the yeah. big boys, the big players. That It's a big, you know, game yeah. all together. So where exactly should I be placing myself as a beginner in the sector? It's becoming very complicated because why there is money cartels do imagine. Uh -huh. That's why you have uh, OPEC, oil, oil money, Uganda is here struggling to find its feet in that game. We are not ju even being allowed to put a foot on the train because the train is already moving and we are shaking it up. Right. Now you have the ICT mobile money was a good business. Now, some people, super agents and mega agents, came in and bought most of the mobile money lines. So you can only leverage and rent from them. So people are already beginning to say, oh, Marak, before you come in, you are entering my space. You can only be my agent, and therefore I will get a commission from whatever you are doing. But either way, as we say, if it's a big bull, that's where you need to be. Right. Don't go on the squirrel, which runs a short distance and is a small runner. Jump onto the cheetah, jump onto the elephant, you will go far. So either way, find your space into the ICT sector. I tell young people who are trying to study what is the best thing to study, these are some of the areas you want to get into, because ICT is with us to stay for a long time. So ICT. ICT is something that a young man should be studying, a young girl should be studying. Even if you have done law, Find yourself into cyber-related laws, ICT-related laws, you'll have some business to do. Mm. So it's one of those areas, and as I've said, it's a global. This is not just a Ghana thing, because now we're being ruled by global dynamics. So you cannot fight them as poor Uganda. Right. We're just seeing here the ESC summit. If Kagame has been called by the G20, don't think he's going to be in Arusha attending some small <laughs> <laughs> talk about the village. Oh my goodness, and we'll get to that because the <laughs> summit actually collapsed just a few weeks ago and yes. we've been talking, what's happening to the block? What's, what are these undertones that you're not reading into? But of course, like you've been told, ICT, 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 just get to know where you're going to position yourself. It's still going to be a winning trend come 2019. So let's move forward to the financial sector and we're talking about financial institutions, banks, yes, sure. you know, microfinances. So uh, break it down for us. Uh, who was the big winner in this? Is it the big players, the banks that we see, the big brands that we see, but also the small, small, you know, the yeah. small yeah. institutions that lend out money, loan out yes. money in small interest rates. Were they the winners at the end of the day? Because we also saw banks crying foul this year. Yeah, they did, especially the regulated ones, unfortunately. But the regulated ones are under the close watch of their regulators. So you can't get it wrong. Some of them are by law required to declare a non-performing asset. I borrow money from a bank and for 90 days I haven't put money there. The financial institution will be told this is not performing. Right. You have to make a provision in cut down your capital and put some emergency funds for that borrower or bring in new capital. Now the small players who have actually been very significant to call the money lenders, they are not small, some of them, they are huge businesses and entrants in there are making a kill outside this space. Because for them, they are a little bit more shrewd. Mm -hmm. And they operate literally besides the law. They are not exactly outside the law, but they will literally be beside the law and say, you have sell, sold me your car, you have sold me your house, and yet this is the collateral. Now, the moment you don't pay them, remember the agreement is not saying this came as collateral, you sold. So you've just lost the house. Right. This house is possibly 200 million, you borrowed 20, the guy is taking it, and the entire 180 is his home to take. In some cases, in the normal regulated institution, I can go to court. We get a court injunction, we get all sorts of things, we review marital laws, and it will be saying this. But remember, the other one is a sale agreement. Going into court can be very tricky. So they continue to make money out of being next to the law, but not within the law. Are they legal, though? These are the challenges. Are you going to say they are illegal? You have to go to court and quite often you find the way they structured their agreement, they may appear to be legal. Mm. Like I think uh, Brigadier Kaka was saying, Brigadier, I think the head of ISO, 
that the criminals now have stopped using guns because you use a gun you go to Makindia, court martial right if you use a panga you are going to end up in the other courts right and there the cases can be open for many years you can win it you can lose it but the sentence won't be as much as so these guys draft their agreement they are very good lawyers who are informing them they mm -hmm. some of them are possible lawyers mm -hmm. And they draft some good things to be besides the law, not exactly within the law. And they will win that day. Now, those are really disrupting even the Bank of Uganda mandate of saying financial sector stability. You cannot have financial sector stability when you're not in charge of the entire financial sector. Right. You're only controlling the banking sector. What is happening out there, Umura, Yubra are not going to finish it up. It requires a very strong regulator with a strong law to come and register all these fellows. And if you're caught transacting, Money look, look, looks like any business that looks like a money lending. It doesn't matter how you call it. The law should allow you to go in and explain everything. But let me ask you, is it possible to suffocate this particular, you know, sector that is actually, like you're saying, making so much money? Is it possible to actually suffocate them or regulate them, so to speak? Because a moon two and see the common exactly. person is running to them. They're exactly. saying that this guy is giving me close to zero interest rate and I really need this money. So why not go to them? Yeah, the and the bank's zero, expensive. Zero interest rate, but it's actually so high. They the borrow, risks. They borrow very expensively. Mm -hmm. The risks are high, but talking about can you suffocate them, you really don't want to suffocate them for that reason. Mm -hmm. They are available to provide a service that banks can't give. I need money, I have a sick child. All I have is my bicycle. This man has money, we solve it there and then. There are no banking facilities for such emergencies. Right. And this country, going by the nature of its economy, creates lots of emergencies because you have very many poor people and problems don't know poor people and rich people. They will still go to these same poor people. You have a child who is supposed to sit primary seven examinations. You haven't finished the tuition. And the head teacher is saying without paying, he's not sitting. You have two days to go. You don't go to a bank. But a money lender will solve that problem for you. Right. So you don't want to kill them off because there is this entity that is relying on them. You just want to regulate it. So the point is, how do we regulate this sector? Because as of now, it's exploiting the vulnerable. Right. It's literally the vultures are eating a sick cow. The cow needs support, and the vultures are just literally picking off flesh from that cow. And do you think the lack, of, the lack uh, thereof of regulating this sector is the reason as to why we are seeing, you know, many Shylocks cropping up? Of Individual course. Shylocks. Of course. If you don't regulate it, it gets messy. People will have their captive markets. Some of them will even go in for bad intentions. I'm not coming to lend, but I'm literally coming to take people's assets mm. cheaply and freely using the little money that I have. So you want to go in, regulate them. I know Umra is starting off picking pace, but it's a completely big space. Since there was no regulation, it's more or less voluntary. People will come up and register and you are threatening. If I catch any, I'll do this. But let's not forget some of them are doing big, right. big actors right. politically connected with all the powers that they can invoke even against a regulator mm. you can see the battles we are having with the central bank exactly. literally this is not just parliament and the central bank they have bigger actors in there so if you send your small small entity and they go and face something as big as a crocodile from the waters, <laughs> you possibly will be in the water yourself. When you talk about the central bank, it's quite intriguing because every single day we are seeing things just crop up and you're like, did this really happen? But of yes. course, you're still watching the pace just to yes. see what unravels. Let's get to agriculture. You say that this is the number three, you know, winning trend in terms of business 2018. So who was the big winner in this? Is it uh, the exporters or the person who is down here, the farmer, the producer? I think the traders really got some good money out of it. Just thinking, looking at what we saw uh, when the price of maize went down, we were told up to 200. Right. But the price of posho, milled posho, did not go down. So somewhere somebody maintained their price, and if the farmers got less, then somebody widened their margin. And that is a market distortion. You don't want to blame anybody there, but you begin to say this market is not well structured. It's giving much power to some actors. And you want to come in again with the regulation because regulation is not supposed to kill markets, but make sure every player has a fair deal on what they have done. 
So you don't see the farmers picking the benefit. We know the agricultural sector recovered in growth from 1.6 the other year to about 3.8. Right. And was a major contributor to economic growth overall because it drives out many people. The outlook is not very good because the weather hasn't been that good and we're already seeing that credit to that sector has been going down right. uh, over the last few months, according to the World Bank Economic Update uh, kind of report. So who are the beneficiaries? Usually they are the middle people, because for them they can shelter themselves against the risk. If there is a gross risk in the sector, which are always there, they will send that to the farmers. I was in northern Uganda last week, and I found farmers who are literally selling the entire acre of cassava before it is even ready. Whoa. They, are, they, they have sent a child to school. They have some desperate thing they need to do. And all they have is that garden of cassava. Selling an acre at what price? 800,000. Only? Now, they have no idea what is the value of that garden. They are looking at the problem they have and what the other party has to offer. That's selling, selling. And you sell. Completely. Now, by the time the cassava is ready, it's no longer your garden. It's in your neighborhood, but it's not your garden. Whoa. The other party will come and begin to harvest the cassava. You see him load trucks and trucks of that cassava. You lost your rights now like uh, Esau and uh, Jacob in the Bible who gave up his birthright. Right. So now these are things you want to say. How do you cure these? And some of the proposals come in handy growing up their cooperative unions, which would make sure they will buy from the members. And when members have these problems, they will be able to support them. But even knowing you are a member of the cooperative union, you could have some bragging rights. Your child won't be sent out of school because the same head teacher knows actually you are in the cooperative where he is or right. she is herself. So there were those moderating factors. And I think these are the issues we need to address to say, can we link circles which are money institutions to production mm. so that they can advance their members planting materials, they can advance their members some soft loans, which can be recovered at that other time. So that you shelve the farmer to say if agriculture is growing, the farmer is growing with it. Right. Right now, agriculture will grow without the farmer. And that is dangerous. And the only person who is benefiting is the middleman. Is the middleman, the trader, not even me, the consumer. Right. Because as I've said, I never felt the reduction in price of posho. I continue to buy posho at 2000 2500 But who is regulating this middleman? Now, because they're no just regulation. exploiting this farmer. You don't have a regulation in this there. It's a free market. But as we say, free markets cannot entirely be free. Willing buyer, willing seller. Yeah, you've got to moderate, you've got to, because their interests, individual interests, can be very exploitative. Even lions know how to regulate them, their eating behaviors. <laughs> they never eat young ones. So how can you leave everybody here? We eat the eggs, we eat the chicks. Where would the chicken come from? So as I said to some people, between the chicken and the egg problem, Uganda doesn't have that. We ate the chicken a long time ago, we are left with the egg. Right. If we don't handle that egg nicely well, will have serious problems going forward. So what I'm hearing from you is that the middlemen need to be regulated. They need to be regulated. And then we need to form circles, cooperatives, and cooperatives yes. for the farmers. Yeah. That's one way you regulate the middleman, by making sure you strengthen the circles to compete without them. Because as I said, don't kill them. But you can introduce some competition. Let the farmers have more knowledge to say, oh, who is good for me? This man who comes and buys and goes away, or the cooperative that I belong to. Right. So I was very happy to find some cooperative efforts coming back into this country because we've been hearing people say, government help us to set up cooperatives. It's not government who is stopping the cooperatives, but it can lend a hand because these are social cooperatives. They are not just Mwomza's trading company, right. which is private, profit-oriented, purely. Cooperatives have a social dimension to them, and because of that social aspect, government needs to pick the liberate interest to make sure they come in and survive. But as we've said, in some of these cases, you have government officials who are already traders. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear that there's a cooperative in this village. Okay. And then some other people are associating cooperatives with politics. So this cooperative might actually dislodge me. <laughs> Those are the things you find on the ground, and we need to go over that hurdle to make sure agriculture right. is well structured, is well organized. It can drive the economy, and it's one sure way of making sure people go on board. Right. Right. Otherwise, ICT is going to be very exclusive. On its own. On its own. Taking all the backs. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for coming in studios. At least we know that ICT, Finance and Agriculture yeah. took the day and still come 2019. Those are the sectors to we look out for. We hope they will. Agriculture may slug off. All right. Real estate is struggling. Uh -huh. A lot of it is government projects. Airbnb is coming on board. Yeah, coming on board. So you have <laughs> seen a lot of things. And, uh, but right. that's the outlook. 
still shaky. We have mixed signals. Okay. Some business indicators say it's positive. Yeah. Others say it's negative. Yeah. Some people say the last six months we are bad. We are hopeful of the next six months. Okay, so we'll be watching this space. Signals. All right, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Fred Mohum, the economist right here in the country. Keep your views coming. The hashtag is Morning at NTV. Which trends, business trends in 2018 do you think were winning? And which trends do you think will take center stage in the business space come 2019? That has been it for Kickstarter segment. Morning at NTV still continues. Don't go away.